my brothers and sisters, good morning. I want to start by thanking the Lord for this day that I believe that the Lord himself has made it. I want to welcome you on behalf of Christ for the blessings and for the great things that he has called us for. This morning, I was reading one of the verses in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And there is a verse that really touched me. It is in, Re in Ephesians chapter 2. There are times when a word in a verse really comes out so clear that it touches you and in a way that you are not even expecting. And I want us to look at Ephesians 2, especially verse 10. So verse I read this morning, and it struck me in a way that I've not seen it before. It says, for we are his workmanship. created in Christ Jesus and good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk on them. The word that struck me is that first part, that we are his workmanship. I took time to think of the workmanship says we are his workmanship. You know, in a daily life, when you look at a product that is completely finished, we always use the word, what a beautiful workmanship it is. Uh, one time I, when I was in, a, um, in Johannesburg, in South Africa, that was about uh, a month ago, I saw a car that really got my attention. It was my first time I was seeing it. I know you may have seen it, but that was my first time that I was seeing. The car was Hover. I'd never heard of that name. So I moved up close to it, I said, Hover? The way the car is designed, the aesthetic effect of the car touched me. I discovered it is from China. I've not seen it in Kenya yet. Maybe it is there somewhere. I don't know. But I saw Hava. And I went. It was on display. So they were allowing people to look at it. I entered inside and I saw every workmanship that is done gives you an aesthetic feeling. The dashboard of that car is touch screen. Forget about our old uh, boards that we should have. It's a touch screen. You look at it, you find it has 360 degree camera. That is a Chinese workmanship. I said to myself, wow. What a mind this one was. I said, Hava has hit the road. And the people are talking about it. Everybody was talking now of, the, of that car, of the workmanship. Maybe you have seen it. Maybe one of you is lucky to own one. But I'm talking of that highest grade of Hava. It displays the Chinese mind said what a Chinese mind, what mind this person heard when he made this car. I was touched. I said, this is classic. It has come, it is being watched by everybody. When I read this morning, and the Bible says, we are his workmanship. When I saw those words, 
said, wait a bit. When I checked the Greek word used there is the word poema, emphasizing the thing made, emphasizing the, the work, the workmanship. But those who look at us, what comes in their mind is not us, is the one who made us what we are. We are a visible, a visible expression of what was in God's mind. We, we, when, when the world looks at us, they say, wow, look at what was in God's mind. We are his workmanship. When we talk of workmanship, we are talking of a finished product, a showcase of what formed the dream of the one that was doing it. It's an art, an art uh, of work that has been done in a way. Just to go behind a bit, when I looked at that car, I saw a sticker on the on the on the screen. The sticker says uh, it tested the sign. Everything has been tested. Everything has been uh, checked to the full satisfaction of the quality work. We are talking of quality work. When I read the Bible and says we are, it touched me. We are God's workmanship. And this has been made wonderfully in Christ Jesus. And I want us to look, to keep on looking at what did Paul have in mind and say, we are his workmanship. He says in verse 10, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And then says, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. When we say we are, we are his workmanship, it means what is at stake is not so much us, but what is at stake is the glory, is the name of the one that has made us. And I thought this morning, I said, the moment you stop for a time being and tell yourself, hey, I'm not certain work piece. I'm not the work piece of my own mind. I'm God's work piece. I'm his art. I'm his finished product on display. That when God wants to speak to the whole universe, he says, I want to show you what was in my mind what I've been doing all these 6,000 years. Here is my product. And he carries you, he carries Mbinga, he carries George, he carries somebody listening to me, he carries Tabo, this, this is my workmanship. When we realize we are his workmanship, then all glory goes to him that has made us what we are. In that chapter 2, God speaks several things. When you take chapter 2 of Ephesians, he speaks of what we were and reminds us that it's important you know where we came from. And it's important you know what God has done. He speaks of, of, of our salvation from sin. He speaks of we are no longer strangers. When you read, especially uh, Ephesians, when you read chapter 2, it goes on, remember, in verse 11, therefore remember that you being in time past genders. And I told you that we Adventists are genders. You know, sometimes when we talk, <laughs> we talk like you know, we we were classified as Gentiles. 
we were genders, we were called and circumcision. That's how we were. Remember what we were. He says in verse 12, we were without Christ. We were cut off from what he calls the benefits, the privileges of the commonwealth of Israel. We were meant to feed on the droppings, on the leftovers of the covenant relationship. He reminds us what we were so that we may know what God has done us in Christ. When you read verse 13, it's a very powerful verse in Ephesians 2. It starts with the word, but now. But now. That word is powerful. There is one writer who um, was a medical doctor. I think it was a surgeon. His name is uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones. He was a medical surgeon that turned to be a minister. He has written some of the most powerful commentaries, especially on the Romans and Ephesians. He has a whole chapter, actually two or three chapters. And you know the title of that chapter are these words, but now. It just says, but now. Emphasizing the sharp the sharp moving from what we were and what God has done. He says, but now, in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes afar off, now have been made nigh in the blood of Christ. He, this statement is powerful. He says, Remember what we were. <laughs> and then he comes and says, see what the Father has done. That's part of the workmanship that God has done. That we have been made nigh by the blood of Christ. What he's saying is that uh, what God has made us is, is baffling. What God has made us, as I told you in the beginning, is that we are not just rejects, we are not orphans. We are his own. He goes on to say, all this of what we are today, the work of what we are, is what has taken place in Christ. When you read verse 15 and onwards, he says, uh, he is our peace, who has made us both one. He has broken the middle wall of partition that was between us. Look at what he has done. He's not talking of what we have done. He's talking of what God has done. The workmanship emphasis is not us. He tells of him that has done it. The workmanship is meant to tell you more about the one who has done it. It is his art. When the world looks at us, it is she seeing what God had in mind. He goes on to say, he has made us, when you look at ourselves, he has made us in verse 19, and I want you to look at verse 19. One of the most uh, powerful thing. First of verse 16, he says that uh, we have been reconciled. He has reconciled us in him. Both the Jew and the Gentiles have been made one, they've been reconciled in him. We have been reconciled to God. We have been made one in him. But the thing that touches me most is verse 19. Paul says, now therefore, because of what God has done, he says, therefore, because of what God has done, he says, we are no more strangers. We are no more foreigners. And it doesn't stop there what we are not. He tells us what we are. He says, we are fellow citizens 
with the saints and the household of God. So he reminds us, we are his work, finished product. says, we are no more strangers. We are no more foreigners. Now, if you have been in, in foreign countries, the stigma of being a foreigner can be so strong. I remember when I was in the Far East, I'd be walking in Manila, and all eyes would be on me. One time I was invited to, to, to conduct a public crusade in a city called Cebu. So I went there with the, one of the local pastors. And uh, they were discussing the budget of advertising the, the meeting. So when I went, uh, we walked around. And do you know what happened? They didn't need an advertisement. The people there had never seen a black person. So some were confusing me with a monkey. Some were confusing me. <laughs> with, they were using their own words that sometimes were, were very interesting. So what I was became in itself an advertisement. And the people came to the meeting in large number saying, come and see a black person. They were wondering who, who on earth made this person the way he is. And what I was helped me to bring people in. And they came. <laughs> I remember we had one of the most successful evangelistic work in that city. <laughs> we baptized over 200 people. And uh, we made friends. We hugged each other. Just by seeing what I was, they came to understand the mind of the one that was behind us that saved us. So sometimes when you are a foreigner, yeah, what you are may be negative to some people, but in Christ it becomes positive. So when you are a foreigner, you are always reminded by the Department of Immigration that you are a foreigner. Every time you have to, you know that now you have 10 days remaining, you have to go and renew <laughs> your immigration status, you are staying. You are always very careful. If you are, your stay has overstayed, you don't want to make any mistake. Because the first thing they will start with is that he has overstayed. It's, it's quite interesting when you are a foreigner. But now Paul says, because of what God has done for us in Christ, we are no more strangers. We are no more foreigners. He says we are fellow citizens with the saints. And I like that word. Every time I see the word citizen. It means I don't need a visa to enter heaven. Heaven is my home. I don't need a visa to go and see my father. Maybe I need a visa as I tabernacle on this planet. But we are citizens. We have the rights the privileges together with the other saints. This is the way we have been made. The Lord has made us such a finished product that we are citizens with the fellow saints. We belong to heaven. And because of that, we, we claim our rights with joy, with power, that's why our prayers are not just mere begging. Our prayers are powerful. We are cohere together with the Christ. Paul says, hey, I want you to remember that we are here even as we walk as pilgrims. We are his workmanship. The people who look at us they move and they see God's mind. God is known by them looking at us. 
I want to go a bit further. You remember there was uh, uh, this, this, this uh, something that Christ spoke to his disciples. It's a verse that I know you know. It is in Matthew chapter 5. He was telling his disciples uh, who they were and their status in the world. If you have it in Matthew, I think it should be Matthew chapter 5, if I'm not wrong. Yes, it's Matthew chapter 5. If you look at verse 10, Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter 5, not verse 10 actually, it's verse 14. Let me correct it. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. He says, you are the light of the world. And that statement is enough to preach for six months and you cannot finish it. He says, you are. He's not saying you can be. He's not saying try very hard to be. No, he's saying you are. And you, the way the Lord God has made you, you are. Even with all your limitations and all your weaknesses, you are. You are the light of the world. You don't begin by working hard to be the light. You are the light of the world. And you know, you know, English language is sometimes weak because when you say you, it could either mean you, second person singular, or you, second person plural. So in English, it's not very clear. But in Greek, just like in Kiswahili, it's very clear. You is not in singular, it's in plural. So Christ was not saying you as individuals. He was saying you collectively as a people, as a finished product of God, are the light singular of the world. That's what he was saying. As a workmanship is for the world to see. He says in that verse, you are the light of the world. Look at it very carefully. Then he came and says in, in verse 16, let your light so shine, not before God, but before men. God can read the heart. Men cannot. So let it shine before men so that men may see your good works. Not God, <laughs> but men may see your good works. And after they have seen your good works, they should not congratulate you. They will congratulate the one who did the masterpiece of what you are. So Jesus said, that they may see your good works and give glory to God. And therefore, being his workmanship, as we are being his workmanship, it means that we are an object of display, an object that displays forth God's uh, great mind, great plan that he had. So that you will find, even through sickness, you are able to go through singing. Through suffering or pain, you are able to go through it singing. When other people are sad, you are smiling. When the grandchildren look at you, they see hope. We do not major now on, on what the world is doing. We are telling ourselves at every step that we are his workmanship. This morning, I commit you in the hands of the master worker. I commit you in the hands of Christ that as you go forth, remember these words. We are his workmanship. We are his finished product. We are on display that those who look at you as a people will give glory to God. That this may become a, a tangible reality today 
that your enemies may be able to confess that that product is wonderful and fearfully made, that this may become a reality, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, I would like to invite you so that we can be able to pray together. Let us pray. Our oh, Father in heaven, what a wonder it is that we are your workmanship. That the way you have created us, in spite of our limitation and everything, we are in Christ, you have our commandship. I want to dedicate this prayer for somebody somewhere that his eyes and her eyes will be lifted beyond looking at the shortcomings of life and to look at the greater God for which you have created us. I want to commit into your hands somebody with a broken heart, somebody whose job is in jeopardy, somebody who is facing financial challenges. I want to pray for a parent somewhere who is struggling to bring children through school. We have been told that you are a great God. We have been told by those who went ahead of us that you hear prayer. I want to pray this morning that you will open the eyes of this person to see beyond the horizon that we are wonderful and fearfully made in Christ. And that the things that hold us will strangely evaporate in Christ. We want to pray today that as we go forth, it shall be a display of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to those whom we shall meet. May our influence touch somebody somewhere. May your name be glorified. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen, my pastor. Thank you very much. We are his workmanship on display. Brothers and sisters, today is a day for prayer requests. We urge